Okay, folks, this is shock, and I'm, I had a debate last night. I'm going to be yelling because I'm going kind of fast. I had a debate last night that I did win. I'm sure everyone in the room would agree. And before I tell you about the debate and what I covered, let's see what my motorcycle brother here is riding. Um, okay, I want to go through some points with you on, um, let me move over again, because I want to, I didn't, uh, I can't figure out what type of motorcycle this guy's on, and now I'm curious. I, my hobby is motorcycle. Um, I'm going to go through some points with you, and before I do, I want to give you some free gifts, free software and stuff. I updated the shotgunnow.net web page. So look below this video. Don't forget when this video is over, go to that website below, www.shockawenow.net and get your free software. I got free games, free software that speeds up your computer, free antivirus programs, all types of goodies. They're all free. So uh, I have them on my computer too, so I tested them some of the best quality free software you can get. But also, if you'd like to see the arguments that I use in debate, go to that same site and click links. Now, um, let's go through what we talked about last night. First, let me talk to you about the person I debated was a really nice guy, um, uh, an intelligent gentleman. He was intelligent and so much so that he conceded and agreed with me on several points. So that means that he's also honest. So look, see the elephant on the hill? One of these days I'm going to go up there and see, what the hell is that elephant up there on the hill? It might be Republican headquarters out here in California. I don't know. Um, but anyways, let's go through the, the things first that he conceded and he kind of didn't concede it in defeat, like where he was like, okay, you know, I lost. But he was polite and he agreed with what I said. And first of all, he agrees with me when we talked about how atheism really doesn't have any objective morality. There's no foundation for morality in atheism. And he said that. He said atheism doesn't have any moral guidelines. He actually said that. Now, one of the things that I've always said, but a lot of atheists have argued with me and they, they just deny reality, I've always said atheism contradicts itself. Because you got atheists that say, yeah, shock, I do agree that it's possible for God to exist. And then you got others that say, no, it's impossible for God to exist. Then you have the agnostic position uh, which like withholds belief in God, but I'm hitting a lot of bugs, that's why I'm talking like this, which withholds belief in God, but still admits that God can exist. So this guy last night said, well, I'm in the middle. I'm not an atheist. I'm not a theist. Now, this is what he said. I'm quoting him. Look at this guy's tire right here of this Drango. It's bouncing up and down off the... Uh, he needs a new shock, I think. Get it? A new shock? I have to say that. Okay. So... I said... So... So... Oh, and then I... This is the most important thing where he concedes that his position is contradicting itself. That atheism contradicts itself. He said it right in the chat room. He said, and I'm quoting him, he said, well, atheists say there is no God, theists say there, there is a God, I'm in the middle, and, um, and I said, well, then for sure you're wrong, because we know that God both can't exist and not exist at the same time. You can't be right. It, 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 atheism uh, uh, therefore contradicts itself, because within this umbrella of atheism, it makes a bunch of contradictory claims. Now, guys, I'm going to pick up speed and leave this guy because I need to go a little bit faster. So, hey, peace, brother. I'm out, man.
I, I gotta pick up speed here because I'm running behind today on my schedule. Look at the mirror, watch. Look how fast we leave them. See, this little windscreen does a lot. You'll be surprised, this little piece of plastic, it's so helpful. So, okay, I, I want to hurry because I want to tell you everything I covered in the bait. So he admitted, he goes, I admit that that contradicts itself. He admitted it, that atheism contradicts itself. You can't say that God exists, uh, or you can't say that it's possible for God exists, and it's impossible for God to exist in the same worldview. Therefore, if it contradicts itself, atheism, you're wrong. We all agree that atheism contradicts itself. It's one big, pathetic failure. You can't have a worldview be accurate and correct when that worldview of atheism says, well, yes, it's possible God can exist. And we know atheists of all shapes and sizes that say that. And then, he also, and then they also say, no, it's impossible for God to exist. That is atheism. There's all this belief what I just told you, both of those beliefs within this umbrella of atheism, it contradicts itself, therefore atheism, you are a pathetic fail. If it contradicts itself, it is not true. Now, let's fly through some of the arguments. Speaking of flying, let me fly through the left here. First of all, I covered the cosmolog cosmological argument. I hit a bump and my tongue hit the roof of my mouth. The cosmological argument the teleological argument, also pronounced teleological argument, and let's go through those, and the uh, historic Jesus Christ. Cosmological argument, in a nutshell, is like this. Everything that begins to exist had a cause. The universe began to exist, and we're almost out of these bumps, thank goodness. Everything that begins to exist has a cause. The universe began to exist. Therefore, it has a cause. Now, the cause cannot be natural because let me tell you what the Big Bang postulates. Before the Big Bang, before the creation of the universe, there was nothing. Contrary to what some evolutionists, atheists, humanists would want you to believe, that there was always this pre-existing matter no, that's not correct. There was nothing. There was no pre-existing material. There was nothing. Now, let's talk about the word nothing. Because some atheist humanists seem to not understand the definition of nothing. But nothing means no matter, no energy. Time didn't even exist. Time was created at that point. Now, no matter no energy, nothing, zero. It wasn't where the universe was like an empty box. No, it's not like that. There was nothing. Now, most scientists around the world agree. Even Stephen Hawking uh, says, let me do my Stephen Hawking voice. It's pretty much agreed upon by scientists around the world. Okay, Stephen Hawking said it's pretty much agreed upon by scientists around the world that the universe had a beginning. See, as, as the scientist of today's day and age, is the scientist of today's day and age traced back uh, science, uh, traced back the creation of the universe. Let me get over here. This cop's flying behind me. It's like a cone, you know, as you go back on a cone, and it has a beginning to it. So, you know how if you follow back like a cone, all the way back like that, okay, let me get back over here. I didn't want to get ran over by the highway patrol, ruin my video. <laughs> as you go back, uh, I like those Hyundai Sonatas for some reason. If, as you go back in time, it's like a cone, it goes like da, 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 and then it goes to where the, the, it was nothing. They know this, the universe is expanding, so if you were to rewind the movie of the creation of the universe, it would all go back and it would shrink down to absolutely nothing. Nothing means no energy. No matter. You got it? Okay. There was a song in the 60s, nothing from nothing is nothing. So how can nothing create Saturn, the Earth, the Moon, the stars? 
matter, energy. It can't do it. Out of nothing, nothing comes. This has put atheism in a very awkward position. For the atheist to believe in the Big Bang Theory, they must believe that the universe was created by nothing and for nothing. But surely this doesn't make sense. And no, I'm not calling you Shirley. So, the cause of the universe is either natural or supernatural. We pretty much know it cannot be natural because all of the universe is made up of nature, natural material. That means that the universe would have to be there to create itself. But we know the universe was not there. There was a beginning when there was nothing. So the universe was not there to create itself. We know it can't be natural or it's supernatural. Something that is timeless, spaceless, of unfathomable power. That is the more plausible position. There was no infinitesimal pellet uh, out there floating in a pre-existing universe, uh, condensed matter uh, or dark matter, and then it exploded. No, it's poppycock. It didn't happen that way. There was nothing in the beginning. Okay, the teleological argument, I only got like four minutes. The teleolog teleo teleological argument, let me get to some more smooth real estate so my tongue doesn't hit the bump. The teleological argument talks about the constants. There's about 50 of these constants. What that means is, imagine a cake, you're baking a cake, you've got all these ingredients. If the ingredients aren't just right, you don't have the cake. The universe, I know that's a basic analogy, but basically these constants, there's about 50 of them, they have to be exquisitely fine-tuned, measured out, if you will. Um, and if these constants are not a certain way, the universe would collapse into a hot fireball. Let me get over here so the semi doesn't squish me, and I was going to get off right here if I still can. There would be no life. The odds of all these constants just coming into being by chance are ridiculous. You can't accept that and be a rational human being that all of these constants, for no reason whatsoever, just by chance, made the universe pop into existence, uncaused, exquisitely fine-tuned. No, it's game over atheism. Do not pass go. Do not collect $200. You cannot reasonably say it's chance. But there's only three reasons why the universe has these fine-tuned constants in it at, right at the Big Bang. And some of these are just put in as initial conditions. Uh, there's only three reasons. It's either design, physical necessity, or chance. Well, we know it's not chance. You'd have to be a complete dodo bird to say that all these constants, what luck, 50 of them. They all just, what luck, we're lucky for some reason. It, uh, the universe created itself out of nothing, <laughs> which we know that there was nothing. There was no infinitesimal pellet of condensed matter floating out in the universe. It can't be chance. Can it be physical necessity? In other words, is there anything in natural law that says that those constants should be that way? No. And even the ratios to each other are fine-tuned. So we know it's either design, natural law, or physical necessity that caused the universe to be so fine-tuned like that. We know it's not physical necessity. We can't say it's chance. The odds are just so astronomically ridiculous that you can't say it's chance. Therefore, it's design. That is a more plausible argument. I then covered Jesus Christ. I talked about Jesus Christ, the historicity of Jesus Christ. Look at this little weenie dog thing running across the street. Hey, you go back home! Oh, I think he's that guy's dog. <laughs> There's a guy right there. I'm like, you go back home! Um, okay, go right here to shockanow.net. Click free stuff. Get your free stuff. I want another debate, guys. Yes! Chalk one up to Christian theism. God bless you. Have a great week.